Hi, welcome to Hadia Movement Systems. My name is Shani Ojubu Mantenso. You can call me Dr. Shani Ohm, Dr. Ohm. Thank you so much for joining me for a Hadia Yoga session. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. It's a special day because it's a special month. It's Black History Month, and we're going to celebrate with some fundamentals for freedom, and I call them Freedom 15. So we're gonna go through different postures, and instead of taking them as a flow, we're gonna take them as individual, particular Hatha Yoga um, postures that are, uh, they touch the whole body, they touch the whole soma system, being, and all of that. So we'll go through those together. I'm so happy that you're here. All you need is your sticky mat. Um, you may want or need a block or a brick. And I'm just propped up on a, on a bolster today, but that's not necessary for you. But if you want to use a towel or a sweatshirt or something like that, a blanket and roll it up under your hips to raise your hips above your knees um, or to use um, as a prop later. Um, but we'll take these uh, 15 fundamental postures for freedom, for liberation, and all of that wonderful stuff um, together. Okay, so I'm just sitting here in a Sukhasana, an easy pose, um, just to attune to our bodies, to ourselves, to the space, and to this moment. You can soften or close the eyes if you wish. Place your hands in your lap, on your thighs or your knees. Anything that you would like, but just a moment to soften, to quiet, to still, making sure that your spine is stacked on itself, one vertebra atop the other. You can lower the chin a little bit to elongate that cervical spine, the back of the neck there. Very helpful for a nice natural breath, but also if you want to pay attention to your breathing, your pranayama, your inhale and exhale. Traditionally, with the mouth closed and finding that space in the back of the throat is called ujjayi breathing. You kind of sound like uh, an ocean wave back there. So it's an audible sound if you would like to assume that kind of breath once we get started with our asana. But taking a moment of stillness, of quiet to bringing our brains into our bodies. Just a couple of more moments here. I'm just ring that to that singing bowl for attunement, for resonance. We are alert, alive. of 15 will be Balasana, which is child's pose. And one of the things with um, our Freedom 15 is we're going to take a journey from childhood with Balasana to our Shavasana, corpse pose. So from child to elder is the idea here. So the best way to do this, um, in my opinion and in my practice, is to separate the knees a little bit and have the big toes touching one another and just sit back on your heels. And once you've done that, go ahead and start leaning the body forward, letting the belly rest on the thighs and then just extend your arms out in front of you. Once you've gotten there, you can lower the elbow and lower the forehead. This is our sixth chakra, Ajna. This is that third eye between the eyebrows, between the eyes. So we have our two eyes, our physical eyes, to perceive the physical world. And then we have our third eye right in the center where we can perceive and conceive of our inner world that we project out into the outer world as within, so without. So this is imagination. This is foresight, insight. They call it a sixth sense. And it's the sixth chakra. So here we're resting the belly on the thighs. We have a nice long spine. 
This is traditionally considered a resting pose. This is Balasana, B as in boy. All of our asana end in the word, the sound, asana. That's Sanskrit for posture, for pose. In the Sanskrit, pre-Hindi, Indian language. Good. So it's very nice to start as this child, resting, solid, secure, and supported. So good for the nervous system. Okay, moving on to our second pose. We're gonna come up into our tabletop position, Galasana, but this is just a preparatory pose. So our hands are right under our shoulders, knees under the hips, feet behind the knees. And so this one, we're kinda gonna get two for one. We're gonna do our cat-cow. All right, and it's cat-cow, but we always start with our cow, okay? So our cow is Vittalasana, and the way I prefer to do these is tucking the toes under. And then from this very secure, wide, broad base position, I can start to massage and elongate my spine. So I start with cow, okay, which is an extension, okay? So I'm extending the spine by lowering the pelvis down as I raise my chest and chin up. And I would inhale on this pose. So it's very exaggerated, very long, pressing into the mat with the palms of the hands and the tops of the toes. Good. My big on my cow. And then from here, I go into my cat and it's the exact opposite. All right, so I start by tucking the tail. That's how I initiate movement. Then I start to draw the pelvis in and up as I round out my shoulders, make space in the chest, lower the chin, and I untuck my toes. This is my Marjariyasana. Marjari is cat in Sanskrit, and we add that asana. So I've exhaled here. I'm pressing into the mat, still with the palms of the hands, but now with the tops of the feet. Let's do that again. So we inhale, and we start to initiate with the pelvis. I always initiate with the pelvis. I start to tuck the toes, I start to lower my pelvis, and then I start to raise my chest and chin. My drishti, my focus is to the ceiling. Good. Let's do another cat. So I'm gonna exhale here, untuck the toes. Curve that spine. Create space. This time broadening the back, the shoulders, lowering the chin all the way to my chest or toward it. Pressing into the mat for strength and stability. Very good. And then we can come to our neutral position. So the idea is you take a full long breath for each pose. So just quickly, if I were to do it, inhale. Inhale, Vitalasana cow. And exhale, Marjariyasana cat. So starting with that cow, and then you can go take as many repetitions of that back and forth as you wish. So now we're going to go on to our third movement. We're going to go into Cobra or Ujjangasana. So go ahead and send the knees back a little bit. And all of these poses can be done in a flow. So as smooth a transition as you can manage, as you would like. The idea is to bring the poses together and to kind of like a smooth dance in a way, a nice adagio dance. So 
and that just means, you know, slow in ballet. So for Bhujangasana, my hands, so I've already come all the way prone to the floor, right? So my belly, thighs, everything. My hands are back here, right under my shoulders, okay? My elbows are into my body, so not out here, but into my body. And I'm gonna use my tricep muscles and my intention, always the intention comes first, right? And I'm gonna push my torso up. So the idea here is to keep the thighs on the floor, keep the legs together, and I'm not sunk in here, okay? So using that strength, this is definitely an active pose. And if it's a little much, you can do a low cobra, a low bhujangasana. And this is nice. So this is a practice, these are intentions, these are invitations. So we're at our third pose, hands are here, elbows are here, this is a lower cobra. And this is just a deeper kind of iteration of the pose. And it'll vary from day to day, practice session to practice session. Good. Breathing in and breathing out with your Bhujangasana. And then we can lower to the mat when we're ready. Very nice. Good. Good, good, good. So now we're going to deepen that extension of the spine even further with our, with our fourth pose. This is Dhanurasana. So let's lower the chin. Place the forehead back on the mat as we did with our first pose. We're gonna let our arms come down behind us. So Dhanurasana is bow pose, okay? So we're making the shape of a bow. So all of these when you're warmed up and everything. So we're gonna bring the foot into the hands. We're gonna bring the other foot into the hands and some warming up you can do just one at a time. You can kind of give yourself a little, you know, because it's very, um, it's asking a lot of the quadriceps, right? It's asking a lot of the spine. So making sure your body is warm. Good. And that you're listening to your body, never going more than what your body agrees to. It's a conversation, it's a dance. So listening, honoring. So we're finding our hands with both feet, the tops of our feet. There are variations on all of these poses. The idea though, is that we're gonna open our body up, okay? So we're gonna open, we're gonna raise the thighs, raise the chest. This is our Dhanurasana. And as you breathe in and out, you'll rock your bow, <laughs> you'll rock your bow, right? So we're long and we're strong, efforting, appreciating the opportunity for challenge, enjoying, even in the challenge, Right? Finding peace, finding ease, finding grace, and finding joy. Good. And then we can lower down. Good. And at any point, child's pose or balasana, that very first pose, is always available to you. So if you like to do that, you can push up. And it's very good after you do like those very, very deep extensions of the spine, is to give the spine a moment. So you can do that. All right, but we're gonna move on. Okay, so our fifth pose is our downward facing dog, okay? So this is Adha Mukha Svanasana. And so our hands are wide, fingers, hands are right under our shoulders, I'm sorry, fingers are wide. We're gonna tuck those toes under and we're gonna press ourselves back into our Adha Mukha Svanasana or downward facing dog. So my feet are parallel to one another, right under the hips, so there's about a three quarters of a foot separation between my feet. My gaze is either between my feet, my knees, or my navel. 
wherever you are, feel like you're spiraling or, or yeah, spiraling your elbows inward and outward. Pressing those heels into the mat. If they're not finding the mat, you can come in a little bit or bend a little bit. But that's one of the things you really want to make an intention for yourself. It's really grounding the entire foot into the mat. Very good. 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 And let's go ahead and walk in. Good. After our downward facing dog. And here you can roll yourself up slowly, drawing that navel all the way into the front of the spine, letting the head be heavy. And we'll come to our stand. Good, very nice. Good, good, good. So our next pose is our triangle pose, our trikonasana. And this might be where you might wanna use your brick or your block. Okay, and you can put that at the top of your mat. And you can use any of the heights. So this is the highest, right? Or you can use this height or this one. So that's it's a nice, nice shape. And if you need to go lower than this, then you can probably find the floor, okay? But wherever you are is perfect for today. So once you come to the front of the mat, a really simple, nice way, and this might be where you wanna do um, a sun salutation, if you would like in your practice. So. Usually in my practice, I, you know, always in my practice actually, I do at least one round of Sun Salutation Surya Namaskar A, but you, um, you don't have to, and we're going through these poses, and a lot of what we've already done and what we will do is already in the Sun Salutation. Okay, so from here, go ahead and step back as I just did. Okay, and so you want about, definitely beyond hip width, but not terribly wide, not too wide and you want that back foot turned in ever so slightly, okay? The back toes, okay? And then the front toes are straight ahead, okay? And that's where you wanna line up that front arm. And then you can check out your back arm. So the arms are parallel to the floor and one right in front of your face and one right behind your head, okay? So you're nice and tall, going into your trikonasana. You're gonna start by leaning forward. So extending that arm forward as you send that hip backward. And then you start to tilt yourself downward. So I'm gonna find Yogi Tolak. That's my first and middle fingers, index and middle fingers around my big toe. You can place your hand on the floor or remember that your block is here, you can place your block here. Okay, whatever you would like, wherever you are, Go ahead from here and take that drishti up to your right thumb. And triangle is actually um, considered a back bend. So depending on your practice, where you are, if you wanna take the, the risk a little bit of opening the body, what you wanna do is feel like those fingertips are going up to the ceiling all the way through the roof to the sky and your triangle. Good. And you look down at that front foot and come up. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna turn this foot in and this foot out. Arms parallel to the floor, checking out my positioning, checking, making sure that back toe is turned in, the back foot is turned in a little bit. Good, same thing on this side. I'm gonna lean forward, so I'm gonna and forward, hip back, and then I'll tilt myself downward, finding my yogi toe lock. The idea also is, um, as best you can, is to do the same thing and take on the same variations with the hands, the arms, on both sides. So whatever you did on the first side, you want to probably make the intention to do on the second side as well, okay? For symmetry, for balance. So we're inhaling and exhaling, always, always. I'm looking up at my left thumb. My thighs are engaged, so I feel like you're really pulling those knees up the body. You don't need to block out this front knee if you wanna make it a little bit soft, if it's a lot on the, on the joint. Right, breathing, we're elongating all the way up to the ceiling. Good, look down at that front 
foot, and then you can come on up. Good. Very nice. Good. So our seventh pose, and I'm just heel toeing in. It's going to be a standing pose. So we're going to take a centering pose, sometimes called a balancing pose, but we're going to take tree. And it's a fairly simple pose, but you know, there's so many variations. You can do all kinds of things with things. So you're like, oh, I got that. That's easy breezy. And then you start building on it. You can always go further with yoga. Okay. So first we want to really, really plant our roots. Okay. So our foundation is our feet. So look down at your toes, raise and separate them. Get yourself grounded. Good. Hips are square. I'm just gonna lift up my right heel and turn my knee out to the side. Still making sure my trunk is as stable and secure as possible. I'm finding a drishti, a focus in front of me. You can either put your foot on your ankle, your calf, or bypass the knee and bring it up toward the groin. So above the knee and as high and close to the groin as possible. Good. Now I'm pressing that foot into my thigh and my thigh into that foot and that will help with my centering. Making sure that knee is out to the side and I brought my hands into Pranamasana. Okay, palms together, thumbs at heart center. And it sounds like Pranayama because it comes from the same idea of energy, life force. Right, and this is a pretty virtually universal hand gesture of reverence, of praise, of worship. Good. And I'm going through this a little bit quickly so you can bring that knee in and come down. And then you will do the same thing on the other side, planting, rooting, finding where you want to place that foot, either the ankle, calf, Standing up tall, shoulders down, neck is long. That knee is out to the side. Drawing in that abdomen. Very nice, good. So we're gonna go on to our eighth pose. So we can heel toe a little bit. We're gonna go into garland or malasana, okay? So I'm beyond hip width apart. My toes are outward and it's basically a squat. Garland pose is a squat. I'm gonna come back to my pranamasana hands. And then I'm gonna lower And we have our 30 minutes together, so I need to speed up a little bit. So this is our malasana. You'll breathe here, you'll flow here. It's going to take several breaths in this position. So here we're going to go into crow pose, okay? Or bakasana. Knees and boy bakasana. So ideally you would do it from here, but I'm going to turn sideways. But this is our crow. So from here, your heels are flat, you're gonna come up onto your toes and onto your hands. And your knees are gonna be out on the outside of your triceps. And this is a powerful pose, a balancing, centering pose. But instead of on the foot, it's on the hands. So important to think of is lifting the hips up, looking forward, because if you look down, your head's gonna go down, you're gonna to topple over. Being very careful with this pose, you're gonna do one foot at a time. You can stay right here, right? You can bring the toes together and breathe. Good. Very, very nice. That's our bakasana. Good. So now we're going to go into our headstand. Now this is an advanced, an intermediate to advanced pose. Okay. So what you want to do here is bring the arms parallel to one another. Kind of think of like chopping your arms together. Important is making a basket for your head so you can interlace the fingers and create a basket for the back of your head. Elbows are in. And if you're a beginner or early intermediate, you might want to stay here. You can bring the knees closer to your face. You can start to pick up the knees, maybe one knee at a time. You can pick up one foot. You can be all the way on top of your head, but keeping, again, those arms, those forearms parallel to each other, right? Or you can kind of float yourself up. So always breathing. 
Finding that focus, quieting the mind. Very nice. And holding that. And I like to hold that for a good like 30 seconds or so. Sirasasana, um, it's really, really good. So that's Sirasasana, your headstand, okay? So now we're gonna go into our Paschimottanasana. So find your bottom, taking it down a little bit. Good, so we're gonna sit up nice and tall. This is opposed to the um, Dandasana, but we're gonna go into Paschimottanasana, raising the arms overhead, and then sending our chest our head forward. I'm going to find your toe lock again. Index and middle fingers around the big toe. Elbows out to the side. Sending your crown to your toes. So not curving, but elongating. Seeing if you can get the belly on the thighs. Good. And so all of these you would like to hold to deepen the stretch, um, to deepen the pose with your breath. Okay, now we're going to go into Ardha Matsyandasana, okay? So just a seated spiral. You can do that with both legs in. I'll face you, both legs in, okay? You can have one leg out, okay? But keeping the hips down, good. Raise one arm. And you can bring the thigh into the chest, and the left hand behind, or you can come around. Okay, or you can take the bind. Okay, whichever you would like, wherever you are today. Looking over that shoulder. Good. And the other side, our seated spiral. And I like to think of it more as a spiral than a twist. It just sounds a little more body friendly. <laughs> if I'm just coming around, and it also makes me think of all of those sacred shapes, the sacred geometry of spirals the double helix, the different things you see in nature. Good. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so now we are on our 13th pose. So this is our inverted bow. This is our um, Urva Dhanurasana. So remember Dhanurasana was the bow on our belly. Now the Urva, which is inverted, Dhanurasana is a back bend. So it's not um, Chakrasana, it's not a wheel. Okay, so we're not trying to get our hands to our feet. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. There are other things you can do. You can do bridge, you can do other things, but this is, a, you know, one of the fuller, more advanced expressions of a pose. So my hands are flat. My feet are turning in a little bit. And I'm looking up at the ceiling and I'm gonna use my arms and I'm gonna press myself up. Good. So breathing here and breathing out. Good. And any time you come out of this and every time you come out of this, chin to your chest first and then bend down. Good. Always protecting that head and that spinal cord. Good. So I usually do three of these. Traditionally, you would do three of those. Okay? And breathing for about five to ten breaths each. After the last one, you can give your spine a little massage, rocking back and forth with the knees drawn in and up the nasana. Good. Our second to last pose is going to be our shoulder stand, our salamba, sarvangasana. I had to like kind of look at my notes, salamba, sarvangasana. So also an advanced pose, so if we're not there yet, this is it, right here. And you can do it against the wall, legs against the wall, and that's basically what it's called. Or you can do it, you know, in the center of the room on your mat. But getting those legs above the heart, above the head, gives um, our bodies a different way of flowing. Our, our chi, our prana, our ashe through the body, okay? If you want to go further, you can just put your hands here. You can keep going and going and going. All right. So shimming the shoulder, shimming the elbow safely. Good, and the idea is to get yourself high and flat. So there are other things you can do after the Samba, Sarvangasana, you can go into Halasana, all these other things, plow. 
that that's our 16th pose. When you're ready, you can come out. And you can also go into fish pose out of it. Traditionally, that's what one would do. But our very last pose is our corpse pose. Everyone loves Shavasana, right? So after your practice, after your asana, just find your peace, find your flow. Move any props out of the way that may have gotten under you in place. Resume your natural breath. Sink your body into the mat, into the earth. Reconnect, reunite with Mama Nature, Mama Africa, Mama Earth. Integrating your practice, everything that you've done, every movement, every pose, every stretch, every shape, breathing in and out. If you want to let that, the back of the neck be a little bit longer, tuck the chin under. This will be a time of quiet and stillness again, attuning again, staying there for as long as you wish. Coming out, I like to come over to my right side, coming back full circle with life, that first posture, that fetal position, right when we only had one spine instead of three, right, curved in our mama's bellies, mama's womb, push yourself up, finding that supasana again, with or without your bolster, God, those are our, those are our freedom, 15, our fundamentals of Hatia Yoga, addressing the whole body, but also the mind and spirit. Each movement we make, each posture we take, addresses another part of ourselves, our body being, our entire soma. So finding that, appreciating that, enjoying that. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm Dr. Shani Ohm. And that was our Freedom 15 for Black History Month 2021. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.